Just a quick preamble before the video starts, I just want to say a huge thank you for the 10k. I didn't actually think we would hit 1k, never mind 10, but thanks to everyone. I'll have more to say towards the end of the video about the state of the channel and other upcoming milestones and what we could do for them. But before that, I hope you enjoy the video. So, I was chilling on Instagram Reels, as you do, and after watching about three fatal car accidents that are recommended to me daily for no reason whatsoever, thanks Zuckerberg, I stumbled across this video about this monkey in the zoo. Now, I've seen this video before and it always struck me as super weird. To begin with, he's standing in such a non-monkey way on both his feet completely upright and the shiftiness in his eyes indicate that he's clearly aware of something that is pretty important. Also, the fact that he makes eye contact with both the woman and then the camera and afterwards just puts on one of the most sinister looking smiles I've ever seen, that is the face of a monkey that knows something very dark and devious and it revels in the fact that you're oblivious to that knowledge. It displays a sense of intelligence that is an order higher than you would normally see in animals. It usually goes being able to reproduce, make tools, communicate, and at the very top, I'm going to put the wherewithal to conceal intelligence. Now, why would a monkey want to conceal that they have intelligence? You want to know what my theory is? Well, I believe that monkeys are just as capable as us humans, and I'd say that they are of equal intelligence. However, they have all decided collectively to play dumb just to avoid having to work and pay taxes. Now, bear with me, okay? You might have heard of the saying, the only thing in life that is guaranteed is death and taxes. Well, I looked at this quote for multiple hours the other day, and I'm still yet to see a clause that says, except if you're a monkey. So why are we not utilizing them as human capital? Send them monkeys to the mines. I know it's just a meme and they weren't actually used in diamond mining, but have you seen a monkey's physique? They would crack rocks like they already crack skulls. Today, I'm going to convince you that monkeys have human intelligence by looking at the brains of monkeys, monkey behavior caught on camera, and of course, monkeys that have already been used in employment. By the end of the video, you will either be convinced that I'm crazy, or will also be a monkey truther. So let's take a look at the differences between human and monkey brains to assess whether this intelligence that they may hide is even possible. The primates with the highest IQ are orangutans, which are sitting quite nicely at 75 IQ. This already puts them on par or smarter than about 6% of the population of the US and higher if you're looking worldwide. So the odds are quite high that you've met someone that is dumber than a monkey. Comparing brain sizes, humans have a brain that is about three times bigger than an orangutan's and the areas that we commonly associate with intelligence and higher order thinking are two times more developed in humans than in monkeys. With that being said, humans are actually an outlier, having an abnormally large brain, and the fact of the matter is that you don't actually need a large brain to be able to contribute to GDP. I mean, just look at people who make podcasts. 99% of them are specialists in fencing and couldn't come up with an original thought to save their lives, but they still contribute to society. Uh, ki kind of. S sometimes. Orangutans actually have the ability to learn directly from us humans and orangutans are also one of the few animals that are actually in the stone age. And by that I mean that they use stone tools and have created sharp objects with hammer rocks. But this tool use was only observed in orangutans in captivity that learn from humans. So what's to stop say me from creating a monkey school that raises monkey builders from infancy into adulthood? And given the fact that they're not humans, we can pay them in bananas instead of real money. So effectively, we can bring back modern day, hey, editor stick here, we're cutting this joke short because, uh, yeah, that's why. Glad we've all came to an understanding. All this is telling me is that the housing problem could be very easily fixed if we were able to mass employ orangutans. And looking at the build quality of some of the houses in the UK, I believe the monkeys would do a better job in all honesty. So now I've convinced you about the capabilities of monkey brains, we're going to be looking at what I like to call the slipping of the monkey mask. Individuals who for some reason have decided to use all of their brain power in the presence of humans, intentionally or by accident. This monkey right here obviously understands object permanence and can associate the idea of a purse and being able to hold objects. So he asks the human to show him what she has and can both identify what food is and how to get the food to himself. With these skills alone, I believe he would make an excellent airport security officer. Just imagine trying to smuggle some crack into the country, and you've got big old monkey fingers probing around up there. You've got no chance of making it. This next video clearly shows a larger monkey going through acute emotional stress, and the younger baby monkey having the ability to instantly calm the bigger monkey. And upon realizing that he is indeed geeking out, the larger monkey thanks the baby monkey. 
With these skills, I believe even the baby monkeys can be put to use as emotional support animals. Just imagine you're completely stressed out and you're having a panic attack, when suddenly a soft hand touches your back and you feel that warm monkey paw. All your stresses melt away and you instantly realise that those things in life only have power that you give them. And when you understand that you are fully in control, you realise that you no longer need to be stressed. Thank you, baby monkey. I feel as though we are all healing by your presence. Finally, we have one of the most famous success stories of monkeys in employment. We have the case of Jack the Train Baboon. It all starts with James Wide, a train assistant, who helped unload and load trains in the late 19th century. One day he fell under a train and lost his legs, making him crippled. This seriously affected his ability to work, and when one day he saw a smart baboon in the local market, he bought him for a large sum of money, and immediately the baboon took to jobs that James was unable to do, being very obedient and capable. He was actually so useful that he would even push James around in his mini push cart that he used to get around. Jack eventually learned to pull a complex series of levers to change signals on the tracks to ensure no trains would accidentally collide. So not an unimportant role either. The monkey was so good that the railway company actually hired him as well, paying him 20 cents per day as well as in beer, which he would be sipping constantly, as you do as a monkey in the 1880s. So what does this tell us about monkeys in employment? Quite simply, there aren't enough of them. Want to know what they didn't have in the 1880s? Income tax. And what a coincidence that they also had working monkeys. So really, who can we blame but ourselves for this lack of monkey participation in the workforce? So to summarise what I'm saying, monkeys are very smart, some even smarter than humans. They just don't want to work or pay taxes. And my simple solution to break down this barrier between human and monkey diplomacy would be to just abolish all taxes effective immediately, solely for the purpose of monkey-human relation and for no other reason. On an unrelated note, HMRC, please stop emailing me or you will be blocked. So once again, thanks for the 10k. I don't even think I can visualise 10,000 people in one room, but to get into it, I have a lot of plans for this channel with interesting stuff that I know you guys might like, especially at 100k, where I will be doing a full face reveal because I have something super cool planned. It may not be entirely legal, but I'm pretty sure we should be fine. And it's something that you guys can get involved with and I think it would be fun to do as no one has actually done anything like this to my knowledge. Apart from that, I'll be doing a kind of face reveal at 25,000 and maybe re-release the first ever video I created. It's super bad, like really bad, but it was on Elagabalus, the Roman Emperor, and it had like 5 views before I privated it. But yeah, we have some cool stuff coming up and I'm looking forward to be able to interact with you guys more. Once again, this couldn't be done without you guys. Love you guys, long time. But anyways, thanks for watching the video, if you liked it, consider liking and subscribing. But other than that, hope to see you in the next one.